Chapter 58 Of the Reviving of the Dead, and of Sleeping, and Wanting Victuals Many Years Together. The Arabian philosophers agree, that some men may elevate themselves above the powers of their body, and above their sensitive powers, and those being surmounted, receive into themselves by the perfection of the heavens, and intelligences, a divine vigor. Seeing therefore all the souls of men are perpetual, and also all the spirits obey the perfect souls, magicians think that perfect men may by the powers of their soul repair their dying bodies with other inferior souls newly separated, and inspire them again, as a weasel, weasel, that is killed, is made alive again by the breath, and cry of his dam, mother, and lions make alive their dead whelps by breathing upon them. And because, as they say, all like things being applied to their like, are made of the same natures, and every patient, and thing that receives into itself the act of any agent, is endowed with the nature of that agent, and made connatural. Hence they think, that to this vivification, or making alive, some herbs, herbs, and magical confections, such as they say are made of the ashes of the phoenix, and the cast skin of a snake do much conduce, which indeed to many seems fabulous, and to some impossible, unless it could be accounted approved by an historical faith. For we read of some that have been drowned in water, others cast into the fire, and put upon the fire, others slain in war, others otherwise dried, and after a few days were alive again, as Pliny testifies of Aviola, a man pertaining to the consul, Avel, Lamia, Saeus, Tiabaro, Corfidius, Gabianus, and many others. Also we read that Aesop the tailmaker, Tindrus, Hercules, and Palissy, the sons of Jupiter, and Thalia being dead, were raised to life again, also that many were by physicians, physicians, and magicians raised from death again, as the historians relate of Esculapius, and we have above mentioned out of Juba, and Xanthus, and Philostratus concerning Tillo, and a certain Arabian, and Apollonius the Tyanian. Also we read that Glaucus, a certain man that was dead, whom they say, beyond all expectation, the physicians, physicians, coming to see it, the herb, herb, dragon were restored to life. Some say that he revived by the puting into his body a medicine made of honey, whence the proverb, Glaucus was raised from death by taking in honey into his body. Apuleius also relating the manner of these kinds of restorings to life. Seth of Zakla the Egyptian prophet, the prophet being thus favorable, lays a certain herb, herb, upon the mouth of the body of a young man being dead, and another upon his breast, breast, then turning towards the east, or rising of the propitious sun, praying silently, a great assembly of people striving to see it, in the first place heaved up his breast, breast, then makes a beating in his veins, CPR comma then his body to be filled with breath, mouth to mouth. After which the carcase ariseth, and the young man speaks. If these things are true, the dying souls must, sometimes lying hid in their bodies, be oppressed with vehement ecstasies, ecstasies, and be freed from all bodily action, so that the life, sense, motion, forsake the body, and so, that the man is not yet truly dead, but lies astonied, dazed and as it were dead for a certain time. And this is often found, that in times of pestilence many that are carried for dead to the graves to be buried, buried, revive again. The same also hath often befelln women, by reason of fits of the mother. And Rabbi Moises out of the book of Galen, which Patriarcha translated, makes mention of a man, who was suffocated for six days, and did neither eat nor drink, and his arteries became hard. And it is said in the same book, that a certain man by being filled with water, lost the pulse of his whole body, so that the heart was not perceived to move, and he lay like a dead man. Also it is said that a man by reason of a foul, fall, from a high place, or great noise, or long staying under the water, may fall into a swoon, swoon, which may continue forty-eight, forty-eight, hours, and so lie as if he were dead, his face being very green. And in the same place there is mention made of a man that buried a man that seemed to be dead seventy-two hours after his seeming decease, and so killed him, because he buried him alive, and there are given signs whereby it may be known who are alive, although they seem to be dead, and indeed will die, 
die, unless there be some means used to recover them, as phlebotomy, or some other cure. And these are such as very seldom happen. This is the manner, by which we understand magicians, and physicians, physicians, do raise dead men to life, as they that were dried by the stinging of serpents, were by the nation of the Marsi, and the silly restored to life. Now we may conceive that such kind of ecstasies, ecstasies, may continue a long time, although a man be not truly dead, as it is in dormice, dormice, and crocodiles, and many other serpents, which sleep all winter, and are in such a dead sleep, that they can scarce be awakened with fire. And I have often seen a dormouse dissected, and continue immovable, as if she were dead, until she was boiled, boiled, and when presently in boiling, boiling, the water the dissected members did show life. Also, although it be hard to be believed, we read in some approved historians, that some men have slept for many years together, and in the time of sleep, until they awaked, there was no alteration in them, as to make them seem older, the same doth Pliny testify of a certain boy, whom he saith, being wearied with heat, and his journey, slept fifty-seven years in the cave. We read also that Epimenides Nosius slept fifty-seven years in the cave. Hence the proverb rose, to outsleep Epimenides. M. Damasenus tells, that in his time a certain country man being wearied in Germany, slept for the space of a whole autumn, and the winter following, under a heap of hay, until this summer, when the hay began to be eaten up, then he was found awakened as a man half dead, and out of his wits. Ecclesiastic Hall, Ecclesiastical, histories confirm this opinion concerning the seven sleepers, whom they say slept one hundred and ninety-six years. There was in Norwegia a cave in a high seashore, where, as Paulus Diaconus, and Methodius the martyr write, seven men lay sleeping a long time without corruption, and the people that went in to disturb them were contracted, or drawn together, so that after a while, being forewarned by that punishment, they durst not hurt them. Now Xenocrates, a man of no mean repute amongst philosophers was of opinion, that this long sleeping was appointed by God as a punishment for some certain sins. But Marcus Damasenus proves it by many reasons to be possible, and natural, neither doth he think it irrational, that some should without meat, and drink, and avoiding excrements, without consuming, or corruption, sleep many months. And this may befall a man by reason of some poisonous potion, or sleepy disease, or such like causes, for certain days, months, or years, according to the intention, or omission of the power of the medicine, or of the passions of their mind. And physicians, physicians, say that there are some antidotes, of which they that take too great a potion, shall be able to endure hunger a long time, as Elias in former time being fed with a certain food by an angel, walked, and fasted in the strength of that meat, forty, forty, days. And John Bocassius makes mention of a man in his time, in Venice, who would every year fast four days without any meat. But that was a greater wonder, that there was a woman in Lower Germany at the same time, who took no food till the thirteenth year of her age, which to us may seem incredible, but that he lately confirmed it, as also he tells of a miracle of our age, that his brother Nielos Stone, an Helvetian, by a nation, who lived twenty years in the wilderness without meat, till he died, died. That also is wonderful which Theophrastus mentions concerning a certain man, called Philonus, who used no meat, or drink, besides milk. And there are grave authors who describe a certain herb, herb, of Sparta, with which they say the Scythians can endure twelve days hunger, without meat or drink, if they do but taste, taste, it, or hold it in their mouth. 